Welcome to Titan Upload Live. Tighten up, tighten up, tighten up. A lot of tighten up stuff going on today. Uh, Jam-packed, man. So with everything going on, I figured this would be the best possible way, best possible avenue to get us in here to talk, break this stuff down for the Titans because, like I said, a lot going on, a lot of changes, a lot of things I think we saw coming. I don't know if we saw Cole McDonald being cut this early. I will definitely get to that. Actually, I think there's more to the story there, and I would love your opinion on that because usually you draft a guy in the seventh round and it's a quarterback. Now, I'm not talking about other players. Look at how bad Luke Folk was a few years ago. The guy couldn't throw a 10-yard pass to save his life. He ends up being basically traded to the Dolphins, to the Dolphins, who we played week one. And a lot of people are like, whatever, not a big deal. For us, it was. It was the first year of LaFleur. It was the year Amy Adams let us know at a scrimmage, if you remember this, or one of the first preseason games at Nissan Stadium, let us know the Titans offense, you're in for a treat. And we get rid of a guy who trained with the Titans, who was in the offseason program with the Titans, who went through preseason games one through four with the Titans, and the week of the game, we get rid of him and we trade him. We trade him to the team we're going to play. And we did the same thing last year with Taewon Taylor. We traded him to the Browns right before we played the Browns. But by then, everybody kind of knew the offense, but maybe not because it was Arthur Smith. So my point here is running backs in general, fine. Other positions, receiver, fine, whatever. Quarterbacks, there's a lot that goes into those. And not all quarter. look at Tom Brady driving the sixth round. It took uh, Bloodsoe getting hurt for him to get a chance. I'm telling you. Uh, on there, there's one thing that I was afraid of and I almost posted. I did. And I should have kicking myself. Cole McDonald came out with the YouTube video, he started his own YouTube channel about a week ago. Okay. At the, one of the questions about being drafted in the seventh round, he compared himself to Tom Brady being drafted in the sixth round. Why is that important? Because the last time a player for the Titans compared himself to Tom Brady in the sixth round was Luke Falk. And then whenever, a couple weeks later, released. Same thing happens to Cole McDonald. If you are a, a, a wide receiver, I'm not sorry. If you're a quarterback, sorry, I'm getting all flustered here. If you're a quarterback, do not mention Tom Brady being drafted in the sixth round or you'll find your way out of Nashville. So again, glad you guys could be here. Again, it's short notice. I'm just excited. I'm sure a lot of people have been talking about this throughout the day. You know, I had to make a video earlier. I mean, diving into this, it's... Again, Trevor Simeon, what do you guys think? Do you like him? Do you not like him? Do you wish we would have went with Kaiser? Do you wish we would have went with Bortles? Another direction, are you completely satisfied with Logan Woodside? That you know, I, I don't know. For me, no. I've always been against it. I feel like he's a great third quarterback. But guys, only two Titans are going to make this team playing quarterback. And, I, and right now, me personally... You obviously got Ryan Tannehill. The next guy that's going to make the team is Trevor Simeon. Unless Simeon gets hurt, he's going to be your number two. Cole McDonald, I think he has some practice squad eligibility left. I think he'll be going that way. So, excited you guys are here. Get to your comments real quick here on the screen. Uh, Like I said, Tennessee Titans, if you're just waking up from under a rock, they were busy today. They cut four, released four players. They signed four players. And we could, we could dive into some of these guys. We'll look at them, see if it makes sense. We'll see if any of these guys are actually going to make the team. Okay, again, I've been very hard on Wyatt Ray. Some of you are still all in, like the media. You know, great backup piece. Nothing wrong bringing these guys in. And there is nothing wrong. You are right about that. But if four teams signed Wyatt Ray last year, four of them, and none of them put him on the field, that's telling you something. Where's fifth team in one year? That's insane. Davis got in with the Dolphins for three games. I give him that. Apparently, Vrabel recruited him out of Ohio State. Fine, I guess. But we're not counting on these guys. And these guys shouldn't be counted on as far as being a big difference for the pass rush. These are going to be maybe special teamers down the line. I can't see either one of these guys making the roster. But again, if you guys feel there's... You got to let me know because I'm... Wyatt Ray... To this day, I have no idea why people are giving him so much credit. Was he hurt last year? If you can say he was hurt, fine. I'll I'll at least 
listen to you. But, I mean, if four teams didn't think he was good enough to put him on the field, to put him on the field, then I don't know why we're supposed to just mark him in as a great backup solution. I, I just can't do it. So, you guys could try to talk me into it. Uh, again, then we released four. Dawkins, we finally, we were batting a thousand. Us, you guys, me, the whole Titan upload community was batting a thousand for the roster, 53-man roster. We said Cole McDonald would be probably practice squad. Uh, I told you they were going to be keeping Logan Woodside over McDonald. I never would have thought in a million years they would have went out and picked up somebody. I thought they were set. So that does give me some hope with the pass rush. That does give me a little bit of hope. We do have some clowny news. I'll get to that at the end. It's really not much news. It's just all over the place. Everybody thinks they're going to report on Clowney and give you all these details and numbers. I'm just telling you up front what I've heard. We got the ESPN thing that dropped a couple days ago. And then now we have a new report, according to Peter King. We'll definitely get into that. And then we'll just dive into who's new. Who's going to be new, again, if these guys are going to make the roster. So let's get to some of your comments. I'll start this thing off. James up first. But before we get to James, I did want to say this. I did want to apologize on a personal note. So Twitch seems like it's it's moving in the right direction. So that's great news. Um, but like I said, last week, Weeze. So shout out to Weeze. I feel real bad. We were leaving the show. He left a $5 super chat. So I want to start this off uh, for Weeze. Here we go. Great, great supporter of Titan Upload. And again, couldn't be anything without you guys. So I do appreciate the support. Where they're at, I guess you can't blame J-Rob. I will get into Clowney a little bit later. I just don't want to do it just yet. Just yet. But we will talk about that. Union Pacific in the house. Tighten up, man. Good to see you. Got Coach Brabel joining us again. Zach, he says, let me just say, for the Titans complaining about McDonald being cut or released, J. Robin Vrabel saw something. And they didn't like more than likely. He didn't perform to our standards. Tighten up, everyone. And we will get into that. That's going to be one of our first stories, Zach. And, um... You make a very solid argument. That's all we know. We can't jump to conclusions. I mean, I'm going to provoke some stuff to get you to think about it, but I don't know either. Nobody knows. All I'll, all I'll say is it's very, when you talk about quarterbacks going late, uh, the Titans saw something where they wanted to work with him. My point, you didn't have any offseason to work with him. And you only have virtual. And then you had, basically, they just got on the practice field this week you know, this past week, just got on the pads. And I know he had a really rotten performance yesterday and he got like two picks and all that stuff. But again, like, do you, do you just give up with him? So something's going on, I think, there. But Zach's point is well taken. Maybe it's just because he flat out stinks. I don't know. Maybe that's all we got. Al Pierce, it's game time. It is game time, Al Pierce. We're almost there, less than a month away. I mean, the season's churning. It's it's right there for the taking. It's getting super pumped. You know, I, I'm still kind of up in the air about if there's going to the, gonna be a season. The Titans mayor came out, our Nashville mayor, and said basically no home um, fans for the first game against Jacksonville. That's a bummer because I know a lot of people like Darren, my buddy Darren on Twitter. I mean, he goes to every game. Titans of Truth guy, I think, goes to every game. These guys are season ticket holders. Tennessee Titans Weekly go to every game. And it's a bummer they can't go to this thing. I mean, I wasn't, I already opted out. I think I guys told you that. It was just too difficult for me, uh, especially for the fact that, like, I didn't know when the games were going to be. And I can't go to a Thursday night game. There's just no mathematical way I can go to any Thursday night game. So I, that would have been my luck. That would have been the only game I could basically, with 25%, that's the only game I would have been given. And I wouldn't even know if I could even go to the game or not. So. That's something, um, it was a tough decision, but, I mean, tough times. I guess you make the tough decisions. R R3K3T, or sorry, R3KT3E says, honestly, we should have released Woodside and kept, that's going to be a debate. That is going to be a good debate. And I think you're going to hear Zach's point of view, as he just mentioned a minute ago. You know, maybe it's just McDonald wasn't good enough. There are a lot of you that are super pumped about Mc, um, Logan Woodside. Okay, and shame on me to come in here with negativity on that. Uh, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I just don't see what you see, I guess, right? I mean, that's just plain and simple. I know he had a pretty good performance against uh, the Eagles. I do. Uh, last year in the first preseason game. I know he did really well. I was at that scrimmage, though, the week before, and I didn't think he stood out as much as people were trying to give him credit, seeing him live in a practice setting 
at Nissan Stadium. And it was rainy conditions. I'll, I'll give him that. He's an okay quarterback. I don't, I mean, Madden gave him a 47. And I know Madden ratings are way off sometimes. I mean, not giving A.J. Brown like an 85 at least is just insane. But when you look at Logan Woodside, what he can do for this team, I just didn't want to go the season. Okay, Ryan Tannehill, heaven forbid, gets the sickness, and now he's out for three weeks, and you're going with Logan Woodside into Indianapolis, into Houston. Um, you know what I mean? Playing some of these tough opponents, the Bears defense and all that stuff. And I just want a quarterback to go in. And I don't know if S- Simeon's going to be the guy who, who can get us a win. At least he's got wins in the past. So I will give him that. I will give him that. Uh, let's see. Eli says, what's up, Titan Upload? What's up with you? Thanks for leaving all the comments. And you left some pretty good comments in the old uh, the chat there for the video. So I appreciate that, you guys. You guys always leave good comments. All right. Yeah, I was a little late today, Variable. I was I was getting the old uh, team fi- fired up for everything, you know. Just revved up, ready to go, I guess. Ready for the season to start. Uh, let's see. They want a better competition. That's a good question if they're even going to get a competition now. I don't know. I know that on the surface it seems like there'll be a competition. But remember, the Titans didn't want a t- competition last year with Mariota, Tannehill. So I don't know. With that two spot, uh, Simeon, they're, we'll, we'll get into that really short. Really short. You guys are by the time we get to the com- after the comments, we're not gonna have anything to talk about because you guys are already on it. So they feel great, and uh, he loves to rep the Titans. What about Rob in the house? What's going on, buddy? Good to see you, Broshmo. Fan to fan network. What's going on tomorrow? Are you gonna be there? You can be live tomorrow with the with the crew tomorrow from uh, I think it's six to seven o'clock, talking about all the latest news on fan to fan network. That should be fun. Rizzo Vegas, what's up? Actually get to see you live. Yeah, man. I mean, it's circumstances unknown today. A lot of breaking news come out of the woodwork. Isaiah Wilson, future tackle or guard. I think we're going tackle. It's been debatable, I think, when he came out. But I think most people are going to go with tackle. And I think he'll be week six. By week six, he'll be your starting right tackle for the Titans who will play, replace Kelly. Um, so, and Zach, Zach agrees. And yeah, as long as Davis does his job. So let's get into this. I'm ready. I hope you're ready. Let's get into this. So we have to start off the show. Let's dive into this. Okay. So Trevor Simeon, what do you think? Titans nation. What do you think? Are you excited about him? You're not excited about him. You know, he had a really good year in 2016. Okay. He had about a 60% passer completion. He threw for over 3,400 yards. And he had, what, 18 touchdowns, 10 picks. But he had a really good defense. If you if you saw, saw the video earlier, I think, wow. I mean, Greg Crosell was on the midday 180, and he made some really good points. And Greg knows his stuff, right? He know, The scouting elements, he, he's very good. I mean, he makes some really good points. He doesn't have bias. But Greg made some points where, like, he is a serviceable backup. So whether you like him or you don't, or he had some rough patches, he – didn't do quite well in, in New York. He he didn't play at all in Minnesota behind Keenum. And then 2016, he kind of got worse in 2017 with Denver, and they got rid of him. Woodside, if your answer is yes, and I don't care if it's 49 to 48, if your answer is yes, I doubt, I'm, I'm just highly doubtful that GM John Robinson gave him a lot of money. I think it's going to be very small amount. It's not going to hurt the clowny sweepstakes at all. It's not going to put us out of the game. It's not, if we don't get him, it's not because like we, hopefully it's because we tried, but it's not because we went ahead and signed uh, Trevor Simeon, right? Trevor Simeon, Sim, Trevor Simeon will give you the play action. So that there's your connection to the Titans. Like, yeah, he's not mobile. He's not as mobile as Tannehill. He's certainly not as mobile as Mariota. And he's definitely not as mobile as Cole McDonald, but he can still do play action. He was around 84 so, I mean, he's not going to put up the Ryan Tannehill, but he's not supposed to. He's a backup. He's a backup. So, what do you guys think? You excited about him? You not excited about him? Do you wish we would have went Kaiser? But, again, and, and Rizzo makes a great point. If he's definitely better in some fashion than Woodside, you go here. Doesn't matter. We're not in the game right now to say, oh, you know, we, we can't lose Logan Woodside because someone else will pick him up. Again, if Ryan Tannehill goes down, we want the best backup we can. And for right now on the roster, that's all you can compare. Now, you can't really com- compare McDonald because he really never got a chance. And I know the motion, some people were excited about that. 
But again, there it goes with your media stuff. Remember the first camp? Remember the first couple days at camp? All I read on my Twitter were media guys saying how he fixed his arm. His arm was fixed. Well, if his arm was fixed, then why did they cut him? Why did they cut him? I know we saw the video. That pass that he got picked off by Durden, that was a... I can't tell if he was throwing to Kenzie or he was throwing to uh, Wilkerson. They were both in the same vicinity. I don't know if you saw that retweet there. But my point is, like, I we weren't at camp. The media, they have their favorites. Sometimes the media only shows you little clips and we judge those little clips. That can get us in trouble because we're not at practice. We can't see what's going on behind the scenes. So to Zach's point, yes, maybe there's more to just than he maybe he just sucks. Maybe he's just not a good quarterback. He can't he can't find the open guy. Maybe he's really slow in the delivery. Maybe I don't know. We'll get to him in a second. But I wanted to focus more on Trevor Simeon. Do you like him? Do you not like him? And we'll kind of start there. So we got Trevor Simeon. Again, excited you guys are here. Second round pick for Yannick Nagakwe. I don't think, I don't, Dirk of time. I, I would love it. I would even consider trading him first. But the Jacksonville Jaguars, I mean, I wish UCF Jaguar was in the house today because he was in the other day. I would ask him. The Jaguars can't be that stupid. Can they? Can they be that stupid? Because think about it. Nobody really trades within divisions. They just don't do it. And if you do trade with someone in the division, you take them for everything they got. It's almost like draft day with the pancakes, right? I mean, three number ones, whatever the case is, you take them for everything because you know you got them. And the more they give you, the more they give you, the more you hurt them, you make yourself better. Jaguars can't be that dumb. There's got to be some team out there that would give more than a second. So I don't know where you heard this Dirk of time, and I'm not saying anything with you in general. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought it to my attention. I have not heard the Titans in this, but I just can't see the Titans in any fashion. Even I mean, sure, J-Rob would call, but I'm telling you, whatever the price is, is going to be double, triple, quadruple what the asking price is if it's the Titans. And out of any other team, Colts, fine. Texans, maybe. Titans and Jaguars, I mean, there's a history now. And they don't like each other. And it goes all the way back to 99 when the stinking Jaguars were 14-3 and to end the season. And all three losses were to your Tennessee Titans. They're not going to forget that. The front office is not going to forget that even though it's not the same front office. But you get my point. If you don't believe me, check out NFL Network. Maurice Jones-Drew still has it out for the Titans. Now, he's been better about it lately, but he still has it out for the Titans. They don't give over that stuff. Uh, Preston, I think he's a good pickup. He's experienced. We are on that Super Bowl run. I like it. Randall, don't worry about it. I was late, too. We're all good. We're all accounted for. Uh, let's see. Rizzo says sometimes the, uh, it's an offensive coordinator that makes it. That's a really good point. That's a really So maybe he did not. Maybe McDonald. wasn't that he stunk. Maybe he just didn't get it. He just didn't fit in the system. You know, at Hawaii, I mentioned this in that video when I jumped in the pool a while ago. Like, they were in a run-and-shoot offense. And we weren't sure how that was going to translate over to the NFL and in the Titans system with play action. You'd think, okay, play action pass, fine. Not everybody can do the play action pass. Not everybody can be like Ryan Tannehill, right? I mean, even Ryan Tannehill couldn't have been like Ryan Tannehill before and this year. You know what I mean? Down in, down in Miami. So Ian Pate says, facts. Owen says, tighten up the QB move makes me feel more confident with a backup with the actual game experience. Me too. I feel like I can sleep at night now. But I still have to deal with everything going on now with the defensive line because that does scare me. Calvin says, Simeon's knowledge of the NFL might play a vital role. Yeah, I like it. I, I mean, when I saw this happen, and maybe you agree, you disagree, but when I saw this thing happen in real time, there was a report we were working out, a bunch of guys. Kaiser was on the list. Um, the guy we signed today, the Jeff guy, Jeff Swam or whatever his name is, we used to play for the Cowboys. We signed him. But these guys worked out. And I'm thinking to myself, there's a reason. There's a reason Trevor Simeon's working out on Wednesday. I don't know what the reason is, but there's a reason. I bet they signed him. And that they didn't sign Kaiser on Tuesday. They went ahead and signed on the off day, I think, today. They went and signed him. So, Simeon. Again, 
Even Kaiser, I would come to you and say he's better than Logan Woodside right now. He he is. Okay. I'm not this isn't like me ripping uh a Titan. Like I love Logan Woodside. And I think he's a great third quarterback in a system. He's young. Maybe he can get to the backup role. But I am not willing to risk my Tennessee Titans, who have a legitimate shot at the Super Bowl this year, on a guy to see, oh, well, you know, he's fit in the system, he's won some awards, he's been loyal to the team, he's been working out with some of these guys in the offseason. Guys, that's not the business of the NFL. That's That may be in other professions. That's not the NFL. It's a business. Ask any player. That's just the way it works. Cold, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you. Good to see you, man. S-Town, S-Town. Uh, Miguel, what's going on? Tighten up. Alex, I think Robinson has a plan for this guy. Cole McDonald may have some problems behind the scenes. I want to get to that, Alex. It's a really good point, and we will definitely get there. Dre Day in the in the house. Give him two-thirds. I'm telling you, I'd do it. I'd do a second. I'd do a second and a third. I'd do... I don't know if I'd do two seconds, but, man, I... He would be a game changer. He would, he, he's pretty legit. Okay. He's pretty legit. And the guy's putting up some stats in Jacksonville. And let's be honest, guys, he don't even want to play in Jacksonville. So what could he do with the Titans? He, I think he's going to be on the move soon. I just don't think he's coming here. I, it's just me. That's just me. King Isaac. There we go, man. So he's not trusting Simeon. Maybe it's just because of his past. Maybe it's because, you know, he played one game, I think, where the Jets got hurt. I think he threw like three passes. That was it. Maybe it's because of the fact that he wasn't, we didn't get to see him. You know, when you look at Trevor Simeon real quick, like he had a really good year in 2016. You could say maybe it's because of his defense. Then in 2017, he struggled a little bit. You know, he still had around the 50% passer completion uh, rate there. But, you know, his passer rating went down. Just his completion percentage percentage was like, I don't know, 59 and a half. So he's roughly around 60% completion percentage. Again, like he didn't play in Minnesota. You know, he was the backup. He just didn't play. So I think a lot of us forgot about him realistically. You know, Elway believed in him at least two years. And we know Elway doesn't typically believe in a lot of guys. I mean, he don't really, if you're not producing right away, he likes to get rid of you. So the end of the day i think this this might be a decent move i did not see it coming i did not see it coming at all and some of you are like well you know this is just um a, a, a situation where you know we have a uh, cole mcdonald wasn't getting it done you had to go out and get a veteran maybe maybe but the way i see it is you knew that back in march you, i mean you knew that before the draft what you wanted to do you could have got a veteran there in in free agency you didn't. You decided, eh, we'll take a chance in the draft. And maybe Cole McDonald wasn't the guy they were looking for. And maybe they just got, you know, they were scared at the end. They, they wanted to have a guy and they went with them. Maybe. I don't know. But you just don't usually get rid of guys this fast, this quick. Jock in the house. He says, glad to finally catch you live. Tighten up. Thank you, man. Thank you for being here. I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> RG Titan. I know it says Kaiser terrible. Uh, let's see. Zach says, just uh, pray that Tannehill starts and finishes. That's probably where we need to be. If we're talking about Trevor Simeon at any point, at least he gives us a chance, I think. But at the end of the day, yes, we want everybody on board, ready to go. And that includes Corey Davis. That includes Davis. Good to see him back. Uh, we got a Diaz says in the Gakwe also to the Titans, man, wouldn't that be nice? I mean, the Jaguars to do this would be totally the dumbest team ever to trade a guy who is a legitimate star and can be even better, go from great to elite. So Madden players out there, I think Nagakwe would be a superstar and he has a chance to go to X Factor. And you're just going to give them to the Titans who are in your division? You got to be crazy to think that, right? Maybe not. Maybe there's more. Maybe there's some truth in the pudding, whatever that means. Whatever that means. Preston says, I trust him more than Woodside and Cole McDonald. Do you trust them more than them combined? I mean, that, that's a good question too. I might actually trust them both than those guys combined. Realistically, backyard dog in the house. Owen in the house. Owen says he's solid backup. It's definitely an upgrade. And that's all I want to hear. If he's an upgrade, I'm in. I'm in. If he's not, because it's not like we're spending a lot of money on this guy. Off subject, do you think Arthur will focus more on opening up our offense? 
by continuing to spread the ball around. He's come out and said that numerous times, backyard dog. He has. Now, whether you believe him or not, I mean, a lot of these guys say a lot of things. And uh, they go to bat for a lot of these players. And then the next day they could be cut. So I have no idea if it's true or not. But he did say he wanted to focus more on the passing game. Cali boy in the house. Titans and M in the house. I have a great point earlier about P.J. Walker. You know, that would have been a great. They really missed an opportunity there. I mean, P.J. Walker would have been your backup. He's mobile. I mean, yes, he's not Lamar Jackson. But. Like, he had a really good XFL career. I would have trusted that more than Logan Woodside. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. Because I think the XFL was a step up over the AAF or whatever that league was that Logan Woodside was in. Uh, Dre Day, if we uh, have Cap as a backup, we're going to the Super Bowl. See, the issue with Cap for me, okay, this is why I'm out on Cap. I'll just be honest with you. It's because he has, and it's not fair. It's not fair. I'm not getting into that argument. But you have to look at facts. And the facts are Cap has not played in the system. He hasn't played in the league in, what, three years or whatever? That's hard for a quarterback. So if you're going to bring Cap in, I would be okay with bringing him in. But he's going to be a third quarterback to start. He needs a year to get under his belt. He needs to learn this system. He needs time at it. Maybe, just maybe, he excels so much that come playoff time, he could move up to the backup position. But he's going to need extra time is my point of our control. But at the end of the day, it's still facts. And the facts is he has not played in three years. That's a problem. That is a problem. Michael, what's going on? Tighten up to you. Any interest in Melvin Ingram? Yes, he is. Oh, good point. He's also on the on the, the holdout list, so to speak. Again, I a lot of these guys, they, they demand, they demand, they demand. And sometimes they get their contract. Sometimes they don't. Seems like the Rams like to do that a lot. They would love to give you your contract. But I think at the end of the day, I think maybe they trade them, but I don't I don't see the Titans being in that mix. I just don't, but I would take him. I would take him if he wants to play. Broshmo, what's going on? He says McDonald is a great development prospect in the NFL. Uh, needs more discipline in terms of decision making. Not ready now. Backup though. Simeon isn't sexy, but he's a fine backup. And I think that's where I am as a just looking at this team. That's a really good point. So if you haven't checked Broshmo out, definitely go check him out. He's not, I mean, he's all sorts of NFL stuff. He's like our NFL guru at uh, fan to fan network. Um, him and JT, they do awesome work, but I, I think that kind of sums it up. You know, the bottom, the bottom line, McDonald's not ready and uh, it's going to take time for him. I always thought he would be the practice squad guy anyways, because of the new practice squad rules this year, where you could keep actually four, but and you don't have to worry about losing them or whatever, you know, people stealing them. But at the end of the day, they're just, I don't know. I just, I think they're ready to move with a veteran. I think teams are getting scared right now. I think teams are getting scared. I'll be honest with you. They see the season right around the corner. I think a lot of them were skeptical if there was going to be a season at all. And there it is staring them right in the face. And they're like, this is what we got. This is what we got. This is our backup. We're any position. We're not ready. We, I mean, it's shortened practices. Cole McDonald, when he got drafted, typically should have had an offseason. The poor guy didn't have any offseason. So, again, I just can't imagine him being that bad where you just get rid of him. There are guys on this roster, I think at least 10 guys on this roster right now, that will be cut tomorrow if J-Rob had to get it down to 70. Like, no thoughts. They're on the list. Boom, they could be cut at any time. Cole McDonald, I don't think, I can't see him being on that list. So you didn't have to do it right now. Now, maybe they think shortened season, you know, like it's it's right around the corner. We don't have any preseason games. Maybe four quarterbacks is just way too much. Maybe get rid of them now. Put the speculation out there that he's awful. Nobody really signs him. And then you can pick him up and secure him on your practice squad. I don't know. Maybe that's an option. Who knows? Uh, what's Michael got? Michael got a good question here because I don't want to miss it. Michael says, is Simeon better than Gabbert? That's a really good question. Uh, if Broshmo's in here, I'd love to hear his perspective on this one. Because from my perspective, Gabbert, to me, has won some jobs now. He's, he's beat Colin Kaepernick out twice. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. And then now he is out of any backup quarterback for Tom Brady. Bruce Arians and Tom Brady, because Tom Brady is probably really important in these decisions, went out and got Blaine Gabbert, you know? So on the surface, I would say maybe Gabbert's 
this is gonna pain me to say this. Maybe he's a little bit better. Like, I don't think he is, but maybe he's better. Like, like people, because he's been around longer and been in more systems. And you know, he was a high draft pick from the Jaguars. He's been around the league a while. Maybe players think he's just more of a polished veteran and you know that he's going to do the good veteran backup things like there's a reason why Matt Castle who was awful uh just kind of stuck around for a while I mean I've never thought in a million years we'd win a game with Matt Castle you guys go back and watch that Miami Dolphins Tennessee Titans game oh my goodness oh my god we almost actually won that game but that was just a horrendous game and there wasn't a shadow of a doubt that I I could put a lot Charlie Whitehurst is another one I, I just cannot see him winning a ball game Trevor Simeon, I can actually see him winning a few games. So, again, I think with the play action, he's not as mobile. That scares me, but I still think there's a shot there. So, for me personally, I would put just a small edge. But, again, doesn't matter who else is out there because it's between Woodside and Simeon. Those are your only two options. We're all going to get ice cream. You're either going to get chocolate or you're getting vanilla. You're going in and out burger. You're getting a cheeseburger. I don't care how you get it. You get it with cheese or without. We don't have a lot of options here. Those are our two options. So we got a super chat from Owen. He says, is Vic Beasley still not practicing? He's off on the side. He's doing his side work. But I think we'll know when he comes back. I think we'll know when he comes back. Here we go with your super chat. If you haven't hit that like button, we got to get the 50 likes before we get off here. That's always important. So tighten up that like button. And if any of you are in the house today and you have not subscribed to Titan Upload, definitely check me out. We do all Titans pretty much all the time. So we're getting into more Titans right now. But again, very good question, Michael. But I would probably go with Simeon just has the edge there. Cali Boy uh, says our backup QB situation reminded me of the kicking situation last year. Oh, boy, don't get me started on that one, Cali boy. <laughs> don't get me started on that one. I hope not. I don't. I think Trevor Simeon can go out there and throw a pass. I think he can go out there and do some things. Now, are we going to go to the playoffs with him? Maybe if Derrick Henry, they can't stop him. But at the end of the day, I think Cali boy, I, I would have more faith in the backup quarterback position. And, um, you know, Maybe you even can argue that even though I think Greg Joseph has done pretty good this preseason, I've heard anyways, uh, and during training camp, and Tucker's been okay too, but I think that kicking situation would scare me more than the quarterback position. I think now we're in good shape. We got a decent backup. We got a really good starter, great starter in my eyes. I think we're ready to roll on that side of the ball. It's the other side of the ball that I have more of a concern now. Uh, Zach says, "How could you be worse than Gabbert's?" Oh, man. He's still in the league, Zach. He's still in the league somehow. He's Brady's backup. Unbelievable. CJ2K says, anything better than Gabbert? Metal Madness, what's going on? Do you seriously good enough? Do you think uh, the D-line is good enough for a complete compete for a Super Bowl? I've been on the record saying no. At this, there's one uh, issue with the Tennessee Titans right now for me personally. It's the defensive line. It just scares the heck out of me because everybody is all in on Simmons that he's just going to be this dominant force and he doesn't need a companion. Guys, Michael Jordan was a dominant force and he was the best to me ever. And Scottie Pippen was so important in those six, six championships. Okay. I mean, I hate to use basketball analogy, but at the end of the day, I feel really, really confident in Simmons. This isn't a judgment on Simmons at all. I'm perfectly comfortable with him. It's everybody else on the, I mean, Daquan Jones, I feel like he could do it. Isaiah Mack, I, I mean, Isaac Mack or whatever. I mean, I, I feel like he can be okay. I just, I don't know how they're going to stop the run right now. I just feel like they need a dominant piece with, they need the Robin with Batman inside. And then I feel better. If we sign snacks tomorrow for a decent, I would feel a lot better about the defensive line. And then the pass rush, it's like, okay, Correa, I, I can trust him. I know where he's going to be. I also see on the other side of the ball uh, or the other side of the field, Landry. I totally trust him. I think he'll get better. Uh, Vic Beasley, we don't know what he's doing right now. I mean, he works out. I don't know if he'll be there week one or not. I mean, it's honestly, I don't know at this point. I don't think anybody knows. But other than that, I mean, who can we count on? DeAndre Walker. 
Okay, I'm excited to see him, but I don't know if I can just sign the Super Bowl ticket tomorrow based everything on a guy we drafted in the fifth round who hasn't been out there yet. He's still got to go out there and perform. You know, um, again, Roberson, he's he's solid. He showed quickness. I like him a lot, but again, I don't know if he's going to be this elite pass rusher that we need right now. Like, he's going to be a very serviceable backup. There's your backup. I'm not putting any stock in, in Davis. I'm not putting any stock in Wyatt Ray. Okay, I won't. Until somebody talks me into that, I can't. Okay. Uh, Michael said he did put up 18 touchdowns and 10 interceptions, uh, 3,500. I think it was 3,401. But you're right. He did have a pretty good year. Give Ryan Fitzpatrick a call. Is he still with the Dolphins? Owen says Charlie Whitehurst. Oh, my goodness, Whitehurst. Goodness gracious. Titans MN says the Saints were smart. They locked up Winston for cheap. Yeah. Winston loves throwing the ball to the other teams. But he can't throw the ball to your team as well. So, yeah, <laughs> very interesting. Uh, the kicker situation, oh, my goodness, you're right. Uh, let's see, Trevor Simeon has more big play potential, but with that, is way more risky. If Simeon isn't as sexy as then Gabbert, okay, he uh, he's now very safe with the ball but doesn't move the off. Yeah, that's a good point, too. Like, I remember, you know, Gabbert, it wasn't that he turned the ball over a whole lot. When you pushed him, he could. But – he wasn't going to move the ball in chunks. That's a really good point. I and mean, he didn't do that. I remember the Jacksonville game, nine to six, took Mariota to come back with basically no arm to at least get us a nine six win. We weren't going to beat Jacksonville without Mariota that day. I'll tell you that. Okay. Uh, Titans MM Super Chat says J Rob could have signed Winston. Nope. Saints did. Here you go. Maybe your argument for the people that didn't want Winston, you know, Winston. He was the, he led the league in passing, but the problem was he threw he has the most touchdowns I think in history for the other team. So that's the only concern I would have. I would actually went with PJ Walker, believe it or not, but that's just me personally. And I know he doesn't got a lot of experience either. But at the end of the day, like I said, you know, Winston, uh, he is talented. I mean, he can do it. It's just a question, can he do it? And you don't want him throwing the ball of the yard. In the Titans offense, though, with Winston, maybe he would be more adamant not to turn the ball over. He wouldn't obviously have any chances to. And maybe, you know, he can make the throws down the field. So who knows? But it's not happening. You're right. And unfortunately, the Saints got him. So we'll see what happens there. Cody Kessler. Uh, no, I'm not going to. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I think I'm out on Cody Kessler. I think I think Simeon's better than Kessler. But again, I, I, you know. I don't know a whole lot about Kessler other than the, the, the season with the Browns. And I think he came in, didn't he beat us one year or something like that? Or he gave us fits one year, I know. Titans Torch, what's going on? Titans Torch getting involved in Twitter. Good luck with that. Twitter wars are constant, man. Constant. Al says, good thing Beasley um, is that we won't have any fans to stand at home open to boo him. I don't know. I think when he gets his first sack, they'll love him, Al. It's just a question, can he get out there? Jay Sean's excited about 84. I am too. Finally out there. Finally. Looks good too. Looks quick. Looks fast. Change of direction. Looks good. Hands. I mean, we don't see enough to judge his hands, but as far as the physicality of Corey Davis, again, I think he's going to have a great season. I am. Just call me crazy. I think he's going to light it up. Carlos, what's going on? Says Beasley, very depressing. Preston thinks we're going 11 and 5. C Dub says Vic Beasley's disappointment. Michael Burke, tighten up to you as well. Titans Torch should have looked at the kid uh, Mariota at backup. Yeah, that was never going to happen. We all know that. But kidding aside, I felt confident in him as a backup. I did. And he's better than Simeon. So, but it was never going to happen. We were never going to pay him that much. And he thought he should have been starting. I get it. It's hard for guys to go from the starting role to backup. And, uh, you know, Alex Smith, again, Alex Smith, great story. Great to see him back, but I think it's really risky to bring him in at this point. Really, really risky. I mean, maybe as a third right now and just kind of have him behind the scenes if nobody else is going to pick him up. I don't know, Owen. I think you lost me on Manziel. Manziel's had way too many chances. He couldn't even make it in the Canadian Football League. So, uh, let's see. Super Chat again, number two. Titans MM. He says, Winston signed for $1.1 million. I see your point. I see your point. 1.1 million is not a lot in this day and age for a quarterback. So you're right. They took in a chance on him. Maybe the Titans should have went that direction. But like I said, unfortunately we didn't. 
And now we we at least made a decision that we're not okay with Logan Woodside at this point or Cole McDonald. So we're gonna bring in a at least as as Peter King says, a serviceable backup. All right, Dodd. Oh no, we're not bringing Dodd back, are we? Let's hope not. Josh Rosen would be a great idea. Again, Josh Rosen, at least on the surface, has potential. But again, like I would go Josh Rosen over Woodside any day of the week. But I don't, I just, at this point in time, I, I think they're just, they're trying to find a guy who can do the things that they want to do. So there they go. Uh, I want Derek as a backup quarterback. Derek Henry? Derek Henry? Derek Carr. Um, I think Derek spelled differently if it's Derek Carr. But yeah, I mean, Derek Henry threw the ball pretty nice, right? Oh, he's talking Josh Dobbs. My bad. I thought Kevin Dodd. I don't know why I thought Dodd. But yeah, Josh Dobbs. Oh, because the D's were backwards. So it wasn't all my fault. Okay, William, trying to trick me. But Josh Dobbs, again, he, he was okay with the Steelers. For, for you know for a short time and then he ended up then they let him go so again at the end of the day we have what we have there are other options out there maybe if those don't work out we go in that direction but at the end of the day they're they're rolling with Simeon they are rolling with Simeon so here we go the Titans ended up signing four guys today uh we ended up signing uh Jeff Swam from the Cowboys I you know he played last year with the Jaguars so this is an interesting one. I told you from the from the beginning, there was one guy, one guy that had realistically sh- a chance to make the team, and I, I didn't think he had any shot, but he's the only realistic guy, and that was the Tommy Hudson, the undrafted free agent out of Arizona State. The guy was, what, 6'5". Uh, the problem with him was in, like, three seasons, he only caught, like, 130 – he only had, a hundred, like, 34 reception yards in three seasons – at Arizona State. Arizona State, Herm Edwards runs a pro-style offense, and you can only muster 134 yards in your three seasons, and you actually played. For me, I was out. But he's supposedly a good blocker, but the problem with that is you already have good blockers when you're looking at, um, like, Ferkser's not a good blocker by any means, right? Johnny Smith's pretty, he's decent. He's decent. I mean, he's a good blocker. But my mind's just totally gone. You guys will figure it out, and we'll definitely get to it. We'll put it on the screen. But for right now, you know, that's all you have. So Tommy Hudson, to me, is not making this team. So you go out and you bring in Jeff Swam. Pruitt, there it is. Thank you, CJ2K. Michael Pruitt. How could I forget that name? But I did. I did. See, we all make mistakes. So Michael Pruitt, he's making the team. We know that, obviously, Johnny Smith's going to hopefully have a breakout and then the other guy that's obviously is um, Ferkser. So these guys are, are locks, these three. Titans usually keep four tight ends. So Tommy Hudson, I thought, well, maybe he has an outside shot. Apparently not if they're going to bring they're bringing in Jeff Swamp. Now, Swamp is a guy who had in his highlight year, 2018, 26 receptions for 242 yards, one touchdown. Here's a key note. He had 11 first down catches. That's important to know because his next season in Jacksonville, he had 13 receptions, 65 yards, and only one first down. So to me, even when he was, he went to a, like, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it's like B-U-T-T-E. It was like Butt University or something like that his first couple of years. Then he went to Texas, which I respect Texas, right? But at Texas, he was known as a blocker and a special teams guy. Literally only had, what, 84 yards and a touchdown in his two years combined at Texas. So just like with Hudson, he's 6'4", though, Hudson 6'5". Neither of these guys seem to catch the ball. The first highlight, I'm not kidding you, looking and researching Jeff Swam was a tight end screen pass for zero yards. That was on his highlight tape. So for me, it's not a guy you're going to want to throw the ball to a large amount of time, but we do need four tight ends, so he'll be competing with Tommy Hudson. Uh, Marcus Marshall is a running back. This is interesting because they cut Dawkins, and now it's funny, like, this is the thing that gets me so frustrated. It's like when you're trying to read insider information, they're really high on Dawkins. Like, oh, Dawkins is going to make the team. He's, you know, he's a great. He's got the experience. And, you know, he had some. He had a breakout game last year against the Bears in the preseason, whatever. Well, now that they cut him today or they released him, now it's like, well, I guess he had a lot of time to impress him, but he didn't really do much. So, again, like make up. Don't. 
don't judge guys just based on their release. You know, there's a lot of guys that loved Mariota to death. They, they defended him to the very end, and then once Mariota got released, some of them still defended him. Great. Others of them then go around and act like he stinks now. It's like, no, you didn't you didn't see him stinking before. Just because now he's on another team, don't say he stinks. I don't know why people do that, but whatever. But Marshall, just the guy who was on the Chiefs practice squad, he's 5'10", 200 pounds. He runs a 4.540. He's from James Madison University. Again, end of the day, he's a very big long shot. He needs a special teams role to even make the team. I don't, I don't think. But what that does tell you is maybe we're a little bit more interested in the Stanford undrafted free agent than we originally thought. Weez, we are not missing this today. And I are, I don't know if you were here when the beginning of the show, but I gave you a shout out. So Weez with a super chat. Here we go. Thanks so much for your super chat, man. It means the world to me. Says Simeon, really, hopefully a healthy season, right? Again, I feel better with Simeon than I would with Woodside, but I get your point. We need a productive year out of Ryan Tannehill. Otherwise, we are going to be in some major trouble. So thanks again, Weez. I appreciate the support. And like I mentioned earlier, you're always there to support. So I appreciate it. Not only on here, but also you comment on almost every video I ever produce. So I do appreciate that. We already mentioned Simeon. Um, Simeon was sacked 31 times. So it shows you that... Like, you know, his mobility isn't the greatest, but he's decent at play action. Uh, and then we have Keyshawn Hogan. Keyshawn Hogan is from Walsh Division Two, undrafted guy out of Arizona and went to Arizona, I'm sorry, in 2017. Seems like he's had some injury issues. You know, the hamstring came up, knocked him out of the season. What's an interesting thing is not that he played on the Colts practice squad for a long time or Arizona Cardinals where he got a start. The interesting part about him is he got his first catch. I'm going to, don't look it up. Do not look it up. First catch. Who did he get his first catch ever in a game against? Man, I wish I could give you guys stuff here, but who did he get his first catch against? Keyshawn Hogan just picked him up wide receiver because we cut Kyle Williams. who did he get his first catch against? Does anyone know? First catch. Who did he get it against? All right. I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. Here we go. Week 16. Saints at Titans. The Saints picked him up last season. They got him in the game versus the Titans. He caught one pass, I think, for four yards. There you go. I don't. I think this guy's a long shot to make the team either. I think he's a filler. Why I'm excited about Kyle, like Kyle Williams, I didn't think out of all the undrafted free agents – I mean, he's got the most potential off the field as far as like he's going to be like a doctor and all this stuff. So the guy's very bright and maybe he's going in that direction now. But at the end of the day, um, again, this is just crazy what we're doing here. So when we look at Kyle Williams, great guy, just wasn't sure how it was going to fit with the Titans. It worth a shot, pro system, Arizona State. But at the end of the day, it's just insanely crazy. He's gone. Mason Kinsey. Mason Kinsey's still alive, guys. He's still alive. And I know a lot of you are interested in Mason Kinsey. And you guys were talking and you're talking about him. And you didn't see a lot of highlights from him. But I'm telling you, the highlights eventually came. He made some pretty good catches. I'm pretty stoked about him. And I've told you from day one, he's got a decent chance, I think, to make this team. Wilkerson's still alive as well. I think the Titans have a lot of potential in these undrafted guys. Uh, Tart is one that comes to mind. Uh, maybe Kobe Smith on the defensive line. Maybe that's why we haven't done anything. Maybe these two guys are going to step up and be the guys. So <laughs> we got Taylor Lewan in the house. Oh my goodness. Where's Taylor Lewan? So Taylor Lewan is in the house. Shout out to you, Taylor Lewan. And let's just be honest, there's not a second or a shadow of a doubt that I believe that is really Taylor Lewan. I'll just point that out there. But I will say this, that would be pretty cool if it was. So shout out to you, Taylor Lewan. Uh, CWCW says the O-line is bad for the Jets, and they had the head case, yes. Um, so they also threw Tannehill under the bus. That's true. But, you know, Simeon worked in that system too. But, I mean, Simeon didn't really have a chance in their system. I mean, he got hurt right away, so... Who knows? Uh, let's see who else we got. Hopefully, Kenzie can make the team. I Every cut that comes out, he's the one I hold my breath for the most because I'm definitely rooting for the kid. I am. I mean, I love the story. 
I think he's really going to excel if he gets an opportunity. The question is, though, is he too much like Khalif Raymond, which would hurt him? Because Khalif Raymond, by all accounts, is, did you see the play the other day where there were, it looked like there was an onslaught going on and a fight that was breaking out or pushing and shoving? And out of nowhere, Raymond just escapes from the pile and goes down the sideline. It was a far shot. It was far away. But Raymond is just throwing it down at camp. I mean, this guy is everywhere. He's making catches. The change of direction is just so noticeable. So if we can get him the ball in the open field, look out. He definitely can make plays down the field. Now, I did see him go against Adoree Jackson. Adoree Jackson just cut his route off right away, and it was a short route. That's the concern when you talk about Khalif Raymond. You don't want him in positions where a third and five and you got to make a play. That guy is Adam Humphreys to make that play. Raymond is your down the field threat or get the ball in space and make plays. Williams, but you had to throw Mason Kinsey in there. See, so I think sometimes we get focused so many on guys. So I don't want to do that. But Cam Batson, a guy I'm not really high on actually has not had a bad camp either. He seems to be making plays and doing this thing too. So today, as I mentioned, you know, they released Cole McDonald. They also released Dawkins. So now the, the backup running back position, that's why we went out and got Marshall. Um, we released the, the backup tight end and who else did Patrick, whatever blank. Um, let's see. We released the tight end. We released, uh, Dawkins. Um, oh, Kyle Williams. We already mentioned Kyle Williams earlier. So yeah, Kyle Williams is the, the other guy we got rid of. So let's just focus in on Cole McDonald for a little bit. Again, here's the thing I think with Cole McDonald, I think there's more to the story as we're about ready to wrap it up here. I think Cole McDonald it's just, I'm not buying the fact that he just sucks and they gave up on him this quick. And there's so many other guys they could have cut, I think. I think for the fact, I, I, and I can't go on record and say this, but it's just speculation, of course. I'm just thinking out loud. But I think personally, there's a couple things that could be possibly going on. Number one, could he be a guy who, he did get benched a few times, but he always came back from it at Hawaii you know, he was a guy that was overlooked. Hawaii had something for him, and then they gave the scholarship to somebody else or something like that. He had to wait. But I think there's always been a story there with Cole McDonald. Was he late? Could he have been late for practices? Did he not take virtual learning as well as most of these people? That's a possibility. Because honestly, the honest truth here, guys, is like virtual learning be, as a teacher it, it's, it's not just everybody picks it up and is good at it, right? It takes some time. It, it's, you know, you don't have the instructor. You, you, you don't have that, you know, where you can just take it to the person. You actually have to respond through the computer. And sometimes it's not easy, like just sharing screens and stuff. It's not good enough. So again, you're not getting that collective room. You know what I mean? You're not getting the room setting either, where you can hang out with the guys at your position. You can learn from them. You ask questions, you can call them. It's not the same thing. Skype and whatever, Zoom. But I think at the end of the day, it's very, very important to think about, like, maybe he just wasn't picking up the playbook. And maybe the Titans, you know, they felt like he should have came prepared and it's been a makeup. And coaches, let's be honest, coaches do not want to spend time walking through it all the time with you. You had plenty of time to do it. You needed to be ready to go. And I feel like they're so crunched on time right now, not just the Titans, but every team. That's why they're going and really giving hard looks at veterans, maybe veterans that you didn't even think were going to play anymore, or maybe people moved on from or calling them in to look at because of the fact that teams are getting really, really scared at this point. I mean, who can blame them? The other thing maybe is going on is something we don't know. Maybe, maybe he did something behind the scenes. You know, teams like the Titans and the Patriots don't let a lot out. We don't really know what happened to Malcolm Butler and the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Nobody wants to talk about it, and I don't blame them. It's their right. It's in-house. They keep it in-house. They don't want that stuff out. I think one day this stuff gets out. So for now, we'll go, he just stinks, and the Titans felt like there's no way they could have worked with him. But I think at the end of the day, there could there could be a story there. I, I mean, there could be. The guy came, shout out to Cole McDonald. He came out of the YouTube channel. Uh, you know, I watched the episode. I liked the question and answer thing he had going on. But he did mention the sixth round Tom Brady thing, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show now. And we know the last time with Luke Folk, he mentioned the same thing. And, and you know, a couple days later, he was gone. So we'll have to see what happens. So that's the show. We'll get to a couple of your comments. Again, thank you so much for joining us. 
you know, again, we picked up a tight end swam. Uh, we picked up Marshall. We picked up Hogan. We picked up Simeon. Uh, we let Kyle Williams go, so there goes another undrafted free agent. We let go of the seventh-round pick, Cole McDonald. Is there a chance we can pick him up? Possibly. There is a chance down the line. But honestly, if they gave up on him so soon, why would they magically just go pick him up? I just don't see it. I apologize. Let me get the screen changed. Nope. There we go. Boom. So thank you so much for being here. Again, if you're waking up just now or you're under a rock or wherever you are, Cole McDonald released. He's gone. I know. I'm surprised so soon. Trevor Simeon, you buying, you not buying, definitely leave a comment. If you haven't yet, leave it in when the when the video goes final. And again, if any other breaking news, we'll we'll be here, we'll talk. So it's been exciting. Uh, but unfortunately, I think I've run out of time. So you guys have a great one. We'll see you Sunday night again for Titan Upload Live. Ken Moore will be with us. So you you won't want to miss that. And you guys are free to ask him whatever. And uh, I'm sure he'll be excited to answer. Maybe we can ask him, has he heard any more on Clowney? Definitely want to know. I um, mean, remember, he's coming more from the Clowney perspective. Um, that's who his connection was through with his friend with Clowney, um, not necessarily with the Titans team in general. So, and, you know, who knows? This could all change rather quickly. But you guys get some rest. You guys stay safe. And as always, you guys tighten up.